Because this is the reel we're going to be reviewing for the entry level or or what I would call so a real, your first reel, your first bait caster reel. And when it first came out, I was a little skeptical and I was thinking 100, 100 bucks, nah, 100 bucks to 130. Usually those reels in the past, they, they usually aren't up to our, our expectations for what I would recommend as an entry reel. I mean, there's those reels that are $60, $70, $80, but there's so many features about them that kind of pisses you off during the day, whether it not be a, a good handle or a, or a not enough line capacity or it's too bulky or something like that. And I never really recommended any, at least we never recommended any. Uh, anything that's right on that $100 to, to you know, $150, $120 price range. Uh, but this year it's a different story because Daiwa came out with this and we, we found out about this during the classic when uh, we was interviewing the, uh, the, the guy at the Daiwa booth, his name was Kurt, and he, he did, there was a Type R model and then there's this model, right? But really, you know, the Type R from my past experience with the Tatula Type R, the upgrades on it. For the first bird, the first bait caster purchase, you're not going to notice that difference. So I recommend going with the base model. And the base model, you get everything minus the cosmetics. Uh, the differences between the base model and the upgraded Type R, you're not going to really notice the difference. I've been fishing this for four months now, and it does almost as well as my Type R Tatula. And I uh, just wanted to show you guys a little bit about this reel on the water before I tabletop it. And this is what it looks like. It still comes with the big handles, big knobs. Still got decent power on it. Line capacity is good. I have it spooled up with 10 pound. And um, currently we're throwing the whopper plopper on it. And it's, it does it does very well with long casts and everything. And the whole thing with the line cutting, the tattoo T-Wing, uh, I think they've finally resolved that. I know we were trying to get Kurt to spill some beans on that when we were there. But he said there's no problems with it. But we, we have problems with ours. We had a first generation tattoo, but like I said, this is the 2016 uh, recommended from Out of Work Outdoors, the first bait caster you should buy if you've never been in the bait caster game before. <laughs> Okay, just a little review on this reel. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Um, it's the Zillion. It's my new favorite reel. But the problem with that reel, the problem with this reel is it comes in at $300 retail. What? $300? Give me something I can afford, man. All right, you got it. It's this one. We've had a lot of viewers um, posting up questions uh, this year about affordable reels a reel we would recommend and there's a lot of them out there and a reel a reel that i would recommend let's just put it this way a reel that i would recommend is i'm kind of like a i demand performance out of the money i spend if it if i spend fifty dollars i expect it to perform better than fifty dollars okay <laughs> that's my standard on it okay so with that being said, uh, there's a lot of reels in the... Okay, entry level to me is 150 or less, okay? And no more than that, okay? 150 or less. I know a lot of people might say under $80, but in my opinion, a bait caster under $80 is a POS. You don't want to buy it because you're going to get frustrated with it after two weeks and you're going to throw it in the trash. That's just my opinion. Everybody has, everyone's got different opinions, but that's kind of my opinion, and I have a somewhat of a mechanical background, and I know these reels are like machines. Things have to be done properly, or they will not perform properly. Um, levers, gears, things like that. It's more critical on a baitcaster than it is on a spinning reel, I'll tell you that right now. So, um... In the past two, three years, uh, we've had a lot of people asking us, and I really, you know, I haven't really found one that I'd really recommend, because it's all going to depend on this or that or this or that, and the price range is a little over than this, and it's a little, it's just never really mixed. But 
for 2016, um, I think we found one. This is the one I'm going to recommend for those guys. The first bait caster reel. Um, this is the Daiwa Tatula CT. Okay, make sure you take note. It's the CT model, not the regular Tatula. This one was released this year as well as the Zillion. And we have both of them. This is the uh the base model okay the ct and then there's the ct type r so for the full name it's a daiwa tatula that's it there's what right, daiwa tatula ct base model then, then there's a type r model which has a uh, some more red paint and a, uh, i think it's a lighter spool but and maybe another feature i forgot what it was but for the most part you know, as a as a beginner as um you know, someone who's new to the baitcaster reel, those little fine um, features, you're not going to notice. Okay? And, you know, I've, been, I've had this for four months. Uh, I had to put it through its paces just to make sure that when I recommended something, it wasn't, you know, something that I take back. You know, something not, not something that I would be like, oh, well, you know, it was pretty cool for a week. And then, you know, after a month, I, I realized I actually didn't like it that much. Okay, so I've had it for four months. I fished it side by side with this guy, side by side with the other Tatula, side by side with the Cronarx from Shimano, and it's still doing pretty good. Okay, there's a lot of lot of cool things about this reel, performance-wise, that I think will justify the $130 price point. And that's the main thing. It comes in at $130. Highly recommend it. It performs like a $190 reel from from my testing. Okay, so that's what I like about it. That's what I recommend. It's not the flashy model. It's the base model. And I'm pretty sure by the time this video comes out, you might even get it for $99.99. Uh, Black Friday coming up, I'm pretty sure you're going to find this deal somewhere. Okay. So let me go over some of the reasons why I like I like this reel and some of the reasons why I think it's gonna make for a great you know addition to your lineup or just a great uh, first time reel or even a great change your entire lineup out and go to this type of a reel. For one thing is it palms very well. That's one of the things that uh, we were talking to Kurt at the uh, classic when we were doing the uh, booth review. He did mention that it palms better, and it does. I yeah, have really small hands, you know, and it palms very well. It's smaller, it's even more compact than the original Tattoo. Big plus. Second thing is, it's they, even though it's a smaller reel, they still give you the 90 millimeter handle, which is a big plus for me. I like the 90s, I don't like anything less than that. I know Shimano's come with 85s or 84s, I change them all out. 90 for me is the minimum. It gives you good cranking power, and it just feels like there's less tension on it. You know, when you're cranking like a crankbait, a good size crankbait like that, or um, a chatterbait that drags a little bit more water than normal. You know, you, could, you do need a little bit more power, and when you actually do hook the fish, it, get, it does, once again, give you more cranking power. So that's a big plus. And as far as gear ratios go, I recommend the 6.3. Okay, that's the best all around that I can find. I still prefer the six six three in most situations. If if I'm not doing anything like uh say special, you know, like I'm not uh, I'm not trying to throw on top water uh, as fast as I can. I'm not I'm not burning a crankbait as fast as I can. I'm not on the trolling motor doing uh, a mile and a half, and I'm covering water with a crankbait as fast as I can. This is a good rate ratio to have um, all around. If you're kind of a standing still type of position and you're fishing around, you're fan casting or you're fishing slow, this is pretty good. A six three. Um, the other thing I like about this is it has Daiwa's Tatula T uh, Tatula the TWS system. This is something that's very unique and very unique and very unique to the Daiwa brand. You guys see that. For no people don't, who don't know what that is, is the TWS is this right here. It's got this kind of like a triangular shape that where your line runs through. And, but when you engage and you start reeling, 
it goes back into, it turns back into like that, there you go, kind of like that oval, oval shape, right? But when you cast, look how big that hole becomes. There's a lot less resistance on the line coming off the spool. It prevents, it, it, get, it gets less backlashes, which is good if you're a beginner. And it casts a little farther. Okay, so there you go. Those are my reasons for it. Okay, and but since this is a introduction or a workhorse type of reel, cosmetics is not on my list of things to have. Because usually, with the, all the reels that I've reviewed, I've knocked a lot of reels because the finish isn't so good. Or I didn't like the paint scheme for some reason, you know? Well, this is kind of an exception to that. Because if you're just trying to get into the baitcaster world, or you're going to buy 10 of them, then um, you're not too concerned with paint. You're going to scuff it up. And I have. And I'll tell you right now, it seems like this paint... Is not really that good. I'll tell you that right now. You're gonna do a kayak fishing and um, just ride. This is just riding on the kayak, the holy pro angler 14, and it scratches up. It's already scratched pretty bad, actually. Paint's not very good on it, but you gotta look past that. If it's a workhorse reel, you're not you're not trying to win a beauty contest, okay? You, you're paying for exactly the aspects. Of this reel I just told you about. And the spool. The spool is a normal spool. It's not a deep spool. It's not a shallow spool. It's your average spool. You can get about 100 to 150 yards. Well, I'd say I just ran off to 100. 100 yards of... Uh... Okay, so a lot of people we've... If... Okay, back in the beginning days of the TWS system, there's a lot of uh, people, and including ourselves, where we have line cutting the TWS system that's in here so the way to remedy that that I have found is when the line comes through the TWS system it needs to go directly onto the uh, spool without any bends in the line and that's how high you want to spool the spool any higher uh, you could imagine that as uh, as uh, you're cranking something there's always going to be a little bit of pressure on that lip of that TWS and it can cause problems. So that's the kind of word of caution for you guys, uh, anyone who's going to be buying this, because uh, I haven't tested this enough to see if that's a problem or not. But I've been spooling it properly too this time around, compared to the first time I was on my tattoo. And here's the inside, the guts of everything. Mag Force Z on the outside, which is what Dial has been running for the last couple of years. Here's your spool. If I can pull it out. Okay. Very basic spool. Nothing too crazy about it. Okay. None of that SV stuff that you have on the other reel. And it's a very traditional spool design as well. Long shaft. Plugs into that. Looks like that. Daiwa Mac 4Z has uh, 20 settings for the guys that are starting out. Put it on 15. Actually, put on 20. And when you get better, slowly decrement. And also, uh, this is not a clicking spool tension. Oh, I, it's okay. So for 130 bucks, you don't have to have that. On the higher end models, you will get a clicking knob. And that's your basic dial reel that we recommend. 2016. Uh, best beginner reel. Alright? Any questions, shoot us a question down below and we will do our best to uh, answer that.